last Sunday, the New York Times published a tough piece about the corporate culture at online retailer Amazon.com. But CEO Jeff Bezos and other Amazonians are pushing back, with some suggesting the Times has a vendetta against the company. Emily Rooney has more. Forced to work one day after a miscarriage. Long conference calls on holidays. These are just a few of the workplace horror stories New York Times reporter David Streitfeld discovered at Amazon. Amazon does not really care about their personal lives. You can't reveal any weaknesses or you will be in trouble. In language reminiscent of the Church of Scientology, Streitfeld and co-writer Jody Cantor quote one worker saying, if you're a good Amazonian, you become an Amabot meaning at one with the system. Amazon spokesman Jay Carney says much of the criticism is baloney. The fundamental flaw in the story is uh, the suggestion that uh, any company that had the kind of culture that the New York Times wrote about could survive and thrive. And in an open letter to employees, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos said, the article doesn't describe the Amazon I know or the caring Amazonians I work with every day. Meanwhile, Times public editor Margaret Sullivan has weighed in, saying, I've heard from readers that the Times seems, at times, out to get Amazon. She's not so sure about that, but says this piece was too general and too anecdotal. And speaking of those anecdotes, I found a few of them far-fetched. Regardless, it's a great read, if for this line only from a former marketing executive. Amazon is where overachievers go to feel bad about themselves. So I'm a little more inclined than Emily to trust the anecdotes obtained by these veteran reporters from people who decided to speak with them. Leaving that aside, what really struck me about this piece was the kind of sneering tone that the authors had toward Amazon's whole enterprise, the enterprise of making retail better. Just one line I got to read. The focus is on relentless striving to please customers with words like mission used to describe lightning quick delivery of Cocoa Krispies and selfie sticks. Oh, the horror. I had the impression they were sitting in judgment throughout. That being said. Yeah, uh, I, no, I agree with you completely. And, and a number of people have made the point that, you know, this kind of criticism probably wouldn't have been would have been aimed at a company like Apple or Google because they make these wonderful, cool things that we all love. Yeah. This is mere retail. <laughs> you know, I think the reporting was accurate as far as it went. I'm sure it was accurate concerning those particular employees. I do think it lacked a lot of context. I don't see any reason to believe that it's any better in the rest of high-tech world. This seems to be uh, the way these companies structure their workplace culture, and I don't think Amazon is any different from that. The other thing that I think was really missing from this is these are highly sought after top level employees who really do have choices about where they can work. I mean, it would be, it would not be the same for Amazon warehouse workers, or for that matter, Walmart clerks or California farm workers. So this was looking at a very particular a group of people and you know it was accurate I'm, I'm sure it was accurate but there was something fundamentally not quite true about it. Yeah, I agree with the professor here that uh, in fact just today uh, one of the co-founders of Google uh, is being is making the rounds, uh, commenting on what he believes to be the burnout culture, how the millennials who primarily staff these companies are being worked to death and how it's wrong and it's a culture that needs to stop. So that validates the premise. I don't know about this whole business of the Times having it out for Amazon. I will say the segment, Emily's segment, showed that Jay Carney, is his freshness date has expired. The notion that if a company makes money, it can't be a sweat shop uh, spoken by someone who's never worked a day in the private sector. I do think it's weird because the Times has a history of doing these type of investigations. We've talked here before about the one they did about nail salons. They've done extensive ones about how Apple does labor overseas. They've looked at how uh, Walmart structures itself overseas. They've looked at labor conditions in many different companies. I think the thing that's shocking to people here is, as Dan said, the fact that these are people, white collar workers, very well paid, who are putting themselves through hell. And it's sort of a self-imposed hell because they are trying to strive for something brilliant. You know, these people talk in sometimes what we might describe as cult-like terms about innovation and discovery and invention. 
And that's beautiful, but at the same time, they are pushing themselves to the limit. So when you hear people talking about, in anecdotes, about bursting into tears, about people missing important parts of their, their family members' lives, you know, I, I have no hard, I don't have a hard time believing that because I think that that's what these people push themselves to do. And as a result, that's why you have such a quick turnaround in a lot of these companies. I don't think there was anything wrong with the piece at all. Well, I would just pick up the, uh, the piece that the public editor did, which is about the anecdotal, too anecdotal nature of it. You named all of those other stories, Justin, and time and again, we sit at this table and say, hey, not enough documentation, and this is the New York Times, to John's point earlier. You, your expectation of the New York Times is, this is locked down from a documentary standpoint. And I, you know, too anecdotal, that it, it doesn't serve the purpose. Would, that's all I'm going to say. I just you want know. to say, too, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if someone in the Times uh, newsroom got a little extra satisfaction out of going after uh, the company owned by the guy who also owns the Washington <laughs> Post. Just <laughs> want to put that out there.